I was doing a little bit more reading and stuff around the whole new creative director at Supreme and just kind of engrossing myself with all that bits of information like I like to do and also kind of giving myself a kind of um, a bit of a kick up the ass on it because I've mentioned it previously it's quite cool and quite inspiring to see somebody that I kind of saw when I was coming up in a scene in London when I when I mean you know scene fashion culture whatever nightlife to see that person go from you know being at the door at certain clubs and basically getting people in at certain parties and seeding people certain things or whatever or just being all around cool guy in a scene to suddenly then go be creative director supreme it kind of is a big wake-up call in terms of the things I want to do in my career now do I necessarily want to have a job in that kind of field probably not do I want to have my own thing going on yes of course who wouldn't especially with the knowledge and the skills that i have um, at my fingertips that makes complete sense um so it's good to see somebody of that ilk being able to kind of rise to that kind of platform and rise to that level amazing great congratulations but i was on um tremaine emory i think i'll keep releasing his name wrong it's tremaine emory right it's not emory it's emory my bad uh, so I was on Tremaine Emery's uh, profile and I happened to stumble across this post that he uploaded five days ago because I haven't been using Instagram that much lately. Not for some cool guy reason. I've been mostly you know, keeping my attention on Twitter to kind of build my Twitter. So if you haven't followed me on there, make sure you do twitter.com forward slash Agostino and follow me on there. I'm trying to get that kind of presence built up. Um, so I've been kind of neglecting my Instagram back. Checked on his Instagram profile and Tremaine has this... Um, a screenshot of a new york times article that he took and he writes this following caption that really kind of pissed me off in general i want to kind of react to it a little bit and kind of offer up my defense because i don't think there's anything wrong with streetwear and i'm really kind of getting a bit fed up with this constant distancing and talking down upon and this kind of really odd conflation that's happening with this term streetwear i don't really think it's that deep personally um but whatever let's just continue so um tremaine emery's uh post on his uh, instagram page is the following the caption uh a lesser yet a lesser yet also important note as per yesterday's new york times article by vanessa friedman streetwear is dead because it's never existed there are simply four categories ready to wear sportswear workwear couture Calling someone a streetwear designer is the same dismissive establishment BS as distinguishing gallery, museum art from folk art, ethnic art, tribal art, etc. Link in bio. Personally, for me, I think that's very dismissive to an entire industry of people who are. First of all, let's stop. Let's stop. This is the first thing. There's nothing wrong with streetwear. There's nothing wrong with being a streetwear designer. I don't think being being labeled a streetwear designer is a demeaning term. I don't think it makes you less than. I think it's a particular field. It's a particular area. It's a particular um, sector of the fashion, overall fashion industry or clothing industry, whatever you want to call it. But it is what it is. It is streetwear. No matter what anyone says, I don't think you could ever have anyone with any sense that would argue that a hoodie and a pair of jeans and a pair of sneakers belongs in ready to wear like really argue about it belongs in sportswear belongs in workwear or belongs in couture it is effectively streetwear anyone that wears a, a baseball cap a pullover hoodie a pair of jeans or some sneakers is wearing a quintessential streetwear look in my opinion i've got to actually blow my nose before we continue because my hay fever is absolutely killing me so let's just pause this rant for one second while i blow my nose oh my god Okay, and we're back. Bloody hell, mate. My voice was sounding like an absolute madness right there. Sorry about that. A pose, a pose, a pose. So, as I was saying, I don't think anyone would argue that wearing a pullover hoodie, a baseball cap, a t-shirt underneath that pullover hoodie, a pair of jeans and some sneakers would fall under any of those four categories that Tremaine kind of laid out here. Ready to wear, sportswear, workwear, couture. I think the reason for me personally, while I'm so attached to streetwear, because for me, it was my gateway. It was my entry point into discovering many areas of interest that I'm now completely obsessed with, whether it comes to interior design, contemporary art, graphic design, uh, literature, music. Like, it's my entire gateway was mainly through skateboarding and streetwear. Without those two things, I mean, no, let's say three sneakers, skateboarding, streetwear. Those are my three main areas that kind of allowed me to be the person I am now. And I kind of hold them really close to my chest. And even though I've got um, 
you know, a really in-depth knowledge of you know, stuff concerning fashion, especially the brands I'm into. Um, you know, I read, I read loads of fashion magazines. I follow loads of fashion collections. I'm obviously knowledgeable about certain brands. Um, I obviously went to a fashion university, blah, 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 blah. My first love would always, always be streetwear. And I think the generations of people who basically laid the foundation of streetwear, who allowed kids like myself to have a voice, to be able to kind of speak through tees, to speak through pullover hoodies, jumpers, long sleeves, you know, tracksuit bottom shorts, whatever it may be and have that um have that aesthetic have that point of view also be um able to sit on the rack alongside a chanel jumper or whatnot or whatever else high-end item you want to put out there i think that's just, that in itself is something worth fighting for that in itself is something worth kind of getting behind and for me personally i feel as if there's this group of kids or there's this group of people within the streetwear scene and i mentioned it previously the whole streetwear is dead because again i think that's a really dismissive as well comment here so like streetwear is dead because it never existed it's nonsense because you know basically supreme streetwear it's quintessential streetwear brand stussy is a quintessential streetwear brand in some way shape or form even though it's got surf and skateboarding um origins what it is now is a quintessential streetwear brand in my opinion now, you wouldn't call it ready to wear would you put would you would you legitimately put a flipping um a uh stussy collection up alongside the same collection that you would put up from chanel or something or from flipping you know maybe not chanel's not a good example from margella or whatnot like it doesn't make any sense anyway we'll continue let's run forward the other thing that i think is i think in my opinion kind of irks me in this regard is that i feel like there's a group of people group of designers that have come through the streetwear sort of door come through the streetwear sort of arena and have basically used the streetwear space aesthetic whatever it may be the low barrier of entry to allow them to kind of express themselves display their talents in order for them to get to their ultimate goal which is always the fashion thing which i don't have a problem with either because i think if you want to speak about it in terms of um what it means in a broader sense right what it means to have people that look like myself to be occupying those positions in fashion is really important because if you look at it you know if you like again i don't like to be the whole do the whole victim narrative thing but there's no denying that the people that actually affect culture aren't necessarily the people that are in the power positions in terms of production manufacturing and creative when it comes to fashion right they don't exist you go to most of the big fashion companies especially head offices and you'd be surprised by the people that work there what they look like despite what they actually make what they put on the runway or who who gets seated the product right it's a really the contrast is, is a bit stark and will kind of um maybe bum you out or inspire you to maybe get involved but there is a clear um there's a clear gap in terms of uh you know us as consumers and us also being reflected in those head offices so i understand if you're somebody like a tremaine or these people that get into fashion or kind of you know you're kind of fashion adjacent and you kind of want to be dismissive of the streetwear thing because for you the bigger goal the thing that's really going to move the needle in your opinion is if you get people that look like you to occupy those positions in the fashion chairs in the in the fashion you know sector which i understand to some extent but i don't think i think you could do both things at the same time i think you can attack the fashion thing and make sure that people that look like me are in those positions are have an ability to basically have their voices heard have their point of view be put on display whether it comes on a runway fashion whatever it may be when it comes on a runway magazine whatever it may be but i also still think streetwear fundamentally is something for everyone it doesn't matter what color creed you are if you're somebody who feels like you're not represented within any space in life when you feel like a bit of an outfit you immediately have a place you immediately have a comfort a comfort place you can kind of go to the same way people um found comfort in graffiti back in the day in mc and in you know break dancing and flipping djing and whatnot that's where you can find your safe haven because you can always find a little click a little corner for you there exists a multitude of streetwear brands on instagram that are making money hands over fist that i don't even know about that kids go absolutely crazy for they have all their roots are basically 
based on streetwear because they have the ability to basically put their ideas on really accessible garments like hoodies like long sleeves like t-shirts that i keep mentioning all the time and have that be their kind of call to action have that kind of be something that represents what they're about and have their community kind of build around that and involve customers in that bring them into their world show them different things bloody blah 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 you know the common story about streetwear so i think both things can coexist but what i don't like and that's a tone that i got from the vanessa freeman article that i thought was absolute bullshit was this idea that somehow streetwear was less than fashion it's not less than if anything streetwear has more um reverence to it and more weight to it than fashion does i understand if you're a streetwear dude though if like i get it let me step let's, let's step back i get it when i went to my first fashion week show in 2016 was it 2016 let me see i got it up here on the thing actually yeah, there we go. This was my first ever Fashion Week show that I ever went to. So big up Virgil, RIP to the GOAT, right? I went to the Off-White for 2016 Menzo show in Paris, um, mostly because I was producing and putting together an online streetwear program, which is why I'm so invested in this stuff, right? I actually built, um, co-produced the flipping syllabus, a whole course um, that would allow uh, young brands to go from idea to basically get in their brand ready for stores and we put all these things in place and obviously virgil was the kind of main kind of lead mentor with all these other side mentors i was also kind of you know helping out as well and part of my kind of you know job was basically to go and attend these sort of things so cool great um amazing privilege i was really thankful that this should happen but obviously i earned the role don't get me wrong cool i did it and I was one of those people that scoffed at the whole fashion week thing. I didn't necessarily get it. I thought, oh, this kid, you know, people are over the top. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, Paris also, I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. You know, mostly family stuff. And also, I've been there myself and I had a really the greatest of time. And actually, fun fact, I was actually born in Paris, um, which is why when it comes to pronouncing certain French words, I seem to have a pretty decent accent because when I was younger, I used to speak French, you know, fluently. And then when we moved to England, in an effort to learn English, I kind of erased the French. So one of those weird things, but I've never really had the best, you know, connection with that place, even though I was born there. But when I went to um, Paris for fashion week and I was given this invitation and I bumped into a few people from London that I knew who were working out there and I was able to see fashion week from like the kind of insider's point of view, I totally understood why brands like palace and stuff were so quick to run to vogue and to alistair mcnally and all these kind of people and have them kind of photo you know take pictures of what they're making alongside these glamorous models because that world is far more glamorous and far more alluring than standing in a booth somewhere in the middle of berlin selling your line sheet to some store in the middle of flipping seoul i understand i get it right um who wants to be standing around loads of bros in a flipping uh, trade trade room floor when you could be going to fashion week jumping from club to club you know taking bumps in the back of flipping ubers and getting given loads of free swag loads of free drinks have all these models being all over you and stuff and whatnot i get it i understand but let's also be fair and say not every kid is going to be able to pierce through the that kind of very densely packed um very highly regulated gatekeeped community or scene or industry that is fashion it's already difficult as it is now even with you know the culture being the way it is and basically hip-hop being the number one reference culture in terms of how it's basically being able to influence different areas of whatever culture that we're in now at the moment whether it's fashion film whatever it's still difficult to get your foot in so to give kids this idea that the ultimate goal is always fashion i think it's full hardly i think it's, it's just it's just foolish in my opinion and it also kind of is a bit dismissive of the power and influence that fashion can have because the street that can have sorry because i think for the most part some of these guys without having the ability to put their ideas on baseball caps hoodies t-shirts and whatnot they would never be given the opportunity to sit alongside or to be adjacent to these fashion people anyway so this weird flirtation they seem to have is only based on in my opinion is solely based on the work they've done on streetwear and without it they don't really have much to offer those people what they want from them is the clout <clears throat> And it feels like what the streetwear people want for, or the kind of the aspiring fashion people from streetwear want from the fashion crowd is the kind of validation which they're never going to get or in my opinion that's why i honestly think but who knows but i also do get like i said the bigger picture goal is to have people that look like me in those positions because if you really want to influence things maybe you would say that's the best place to go 
And also, if you want to really get to the bag, let's be honest, working for an LVMH, you know, a caring is far more, you're far more, you're far more able to get to the bag than legitimately just working for your little um, startup street restaurant that you might have a couple of pop-ups here and there throughout the year. I understand, but I don't think it's fair to be dismissive of it because it just, I don't know, man, there's just so much weight to it. There's so many kids out there that legitimately can find so much solace in streetwear, that can find so much direction in streetwear, that can find so much hope, um, careers, friends, community. I just don't like this kind of idea that somehow it's less than, it's not. Um, it's, it's just, it, they both can coexist. There's no need to dismiss one or the other. And if anything, let's be honest, especially when it comes to menswear, fashion in the most, for the most part, most of my friends, especially, you know, let's, let's be really, really honest, who legitimately is wearing all these luxury brands that everyone's talking about and gassing? If you're not ASAP Rocky, if you're not people from the Migos, if you're not Ghana and stuff and Young Fuck, who's wearing these designer brands? No one. I go to Westfield sometimes and walk around and see, check the shops. Most of the kids I see wearing, or younger kids, I see there on a the Thursday, Friday night trying to buy an outfit before they go out. They're heading into Uniqlo. They're going to Paul and Bear. They're going to... um. Uh, Primark they go to whatever stores that they're around to kind of get something to kind of mix in with whatever stuff that they have but they're not going to buy full head-to-toe looks in Gucci and stuff and Balenciaga they can't afford that stuff but the other stuff that I mentioned the Zara's the Paul and Bear that that's to them is a form of luxury and for the most part the stuff that they sell in there is mostly it's probably closer to streetwear than it would be to fashion so this whole kind of fashion thing is weird because the customer that they're serving it to doesn't look like me or them for the most part and the kids that do look like me are the ones that are mostly kind of pointing their kind of uh, or are spending their money in places where you would say the product is maybe less than what both of those sectors are offering in terms of fashion and streetwear so that's the only thing i'd say when it comes to that i just don't i, I just don't like that but let's just continue and read the quote that he screenshotted um, this it says this follows it says calling someone streetwear designer is a way of dismiss them said Tremaine the founder and designer of Denim Tears a brand that used jeans to tell a story the black American experience it means of control he says a Denim Tears Tyson Beckford sweater a cotton reef jeans are part of the Met's current um, costume Institute show in America lexicon of fashion alongside the giant bowl gowns from Oscar de la Rente and or a gold um, sequence from Norman Norell but the streetwear implication Mr. M Murray um, said is that the creators are not real fashion designers and that they somehow don't come from the same pedigree and their output is less artistic there's an element he said of how out there you charge this much for a t-shirt how dare you claim entry yeah but I don't know man I, I think this is all gas personally I think this is all gas because in my opinion the, why I hated that Vanessa Friedman article is because if you look through some of her previous articles at New York Times she's done why in my opinion again it's not just her many people have done it she's done that weird fashion dog whistling thing where they say oh the end of streetwear finally the return of tailoring in my opinion when people say those kind of things that to me is more of a dog whistle to get the blacks and the browns and the non-whites out of here get all these ragamuffins out of our fashion place we want to see flipping pleats and you know hems and whatnot like and sequins like the, that's what that means to me um i don't think the whole like streetwear designer thing means that i think that means you come from a particular school and let's also be honest too like going to a fashion school and actually getting an education in how to put a garment together is a far better way to understand how to make clothing than just making a flannel in your bedroom like there's no let's not conflate the two things it doesn't mean that if you make a flat on your bedroom in a real streetwear cut and sew way that you can't take that and elevate it to a level where you can put it on the rack and sell it alongside a Balenciaga flannel but let's also be very honest and say Demna's education working in fashion and working for all these houses in terms of Louis Vuitton and working at Balenciaga has allowed him to take whatever interest that he has in streetwear and distill it into be able to kind of create on that kind of high level in terms of fashion of course but we've also seen in terms of designers like Jerry Lorenzo he was able to take his aesthetic that he liked you know in terms of how he liked the cut of his t-shirts the cut of his pants and he was able to kind of elevate that to the point where yes he was sold alongside some of the more established brands that's also legit but to suggest that um just because people will maybe take more would have more value in an education 
than it would in someone just doing it in their bedroom is a bad thing. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. I think just to coming from two different places, um, they obviously still reach the same point in terms of, um, their in terms of the the kind of canvas they're using because we're all using the same materials. Um, yes, different produce and manufacture, but essentially a hoodie is a hoodie regardless of who you get it from. Um, cool, but it's still coming from the same place. It's still coming from the same place. It's still coming from the same place, and um, yeah, I just I don't know, man. I just I just feel as if this group of guys, you know, especially the ones that are kind of highlighted in the street where is Dead Article, the Heron Prestons, the Rugi, that's at Bali. It feels like to me they never ever wanted to be streetwear anyway. They just used it, in my opinion, to kind of get to where they wanted to go to, which was fashion. Once they got to the fashion bit, they didn't want to distance themselves from it because it feels like it cheapens their brand. But in my opinion, I feel like they wouldn't be anywhere that they are now at the moment if they didn't come through the education. If they weren't able to, like, especially in Heron Preston's case, if he wasn't able to put Gucci flipping stars on their Nike Air Force Ones, print flipping bootleg, you know, Givenchy T-shirts, uh, Rude wasn't able to put to make flipping, you know, um, cigarette box flip T-shirts and stuff that's quintessential streetwear if you're not able to come from that point of view to kind of display your talents and your creative nows no one would ever give you a look in terms of being able to have a, a brand or to be brought into a new guards group or to be able to you know um head bally like i just don't understand this kind of dismissive nature that these guys have when it comes to streetwear if anything it's an important part of their story it's not the entire thing but it is an important part that should be told um and especially for someone like myself who legitimately spent a long time in the scene you know coming up especially i've got some highlight reels of myself here just to kind of cap it off of why this affects me and why i'm so kind of wound up about it you know like this this meant a lot to me this shit meant a lot to me this must have been like 2018 or 2008 or something um at some um crooked tongues event in nike town i've got a flipping hundreds paisley um t-shirt on very rare at the time a box flipping you know a box haircut who, who a high top well, high top whatever you call it right haircut who does that nowadays that's the kind of reference that is quintessential streetwear this head-to-toe quintessential streetwear you know sbs levi's 12 bar t-shirt a company that I used to intern at my first internship in terms of a streetwear company uh, a vintage uh snapback um hat from a team i don't even know who they are i think they're the florida marlins or something i think right on the way to football or something another quintessential streetwear piece me buying vintage uh, basketball trainers and all these things are not new these things are st you're still seeing kind of iterations of this same thing being um done nowadays um this is me again back in the day 20 2008 maybe i don't know 19 20 or something years old um where i think that's a houston is it houston astros i don't know what team that is um vintage starter hat right vintage like shiny gold here in the front satin gold a uh, snapback hat with a with a really cool Uniqlo um, down jacket they did when Uniqlo first launched in the UK around that sort of time um, and they were actually bringing over some really great pieces that they used to only sell in Japan over here and then you know later on it got to shit but it was a great jacket I really regret um, losing it or maybe I, I sold it I'm not too, too sure um, couldn't decide to street where again I've got the first pair of hundreds salvage denim on that's something to brag about back then maybe not now because maybe it's not as cool but back then this was something to brag about that like, this was a big deal this might as well have been fragment denim this might as well have been vism denim you know that was given um by bobby hundreds back in the day big up him um hunter dunk you know hunter uh um, sb sorry uh back in the day again hear me he me wearing a i forgot what collaboration that is i think that was studio neighborhood uh collaboration t-shirt with the double taps and vans uh chuckers that is quintessential streetwear and there's nothing wrong with it of course you can evolve you can go into other things but let's be um let's be fair to the kids let's give them an opportunity to cultivate their careers in a space that i think is more far more welcoming to them especially to people that are misfits people that feel like they don't belong than it would be in fashion fashion is already difficult for women it's difficult for women who aren't white right women fashion generally is an inherently what is inherently like um what you call it is majority i guess most of the employees that work within the fashion industry you would say are women right for the most part it's difficult to get into fashion even if you're passionate about that shit and you are really schooled you've got your education if you're a woman and you're not even white it's hard to get into so imagine someone that looks like i 
stepping in and trying to get in it doesn't work cool so you want to get in where you fit in you find streetwear you be able to print t-shirts and suddenly for you be able to build this little brand you're now stocked in the same stores of the same places that were rejecting you that that, that the other time that amazing then five years ten years later down the line that aesthetic has now become the cultural currency nowadays right it's now become the it thing that people want to the point where luxury houses are willing to hire you to work for their company to reinvent it so that they can appeal to the kids imagine how um full circle that must feel to the guy that was getting followed around like myself you, you you know getting followed around at harvey nicks getting followed around at um, selfridges there were times even i was to get <laughs> there's time when i used to get bad vibes going into stores like hideout back in the day and again hideout is a good example especially the older dudes that used to run it that were you know that were, they were a bit like cunts but you know later on when you started to walk in there with the right people they would treat you nice which was always you know a bit harsh to take it's a bit of a sad realization you know all it took was some you standing to somebody to suddenly someone to think you're cool but those guys back in the day you'd walk in there looking at myself and they'd give you weird looks now it could be because they didn't like me who knows i don't know what the fact is but for sure it did change as i was growing up and you know more kids were coming in and more kids that didn't look like them were coming in then they couldn't avoid not bringing in the youth then that store started to get a bad reputation we used to say it was a horrible store don't shop there so they obviously then changed who was on the shop floor and got rid of all the old folk and told them to stay downstairs and then put all the youngsters on the shop floor then decided to improve and it still you know didn't last for long but still they tried to do something to kind of reinvent it but that is where you get in you get in where you fit in and then you can try and segue your way out of it but i just feel like these guys being super dismissive about streetwear it doesn't do anyone any favors no one really wins when the family feuds in my opinion and i don't necessarily see what the point is of all that i really don't i don't get it man I, again like i said i get the general bigger picture goal i get it people like me to be in those positions or people that look like myself you know non-white people let's say again i don't like to kind of separate us because you know but let's be let's be called a spade a spade those big you know fashion houses and you know the big power players in fashion they're not hiring people like me in general so but even though most of the things that have been put out on that runway the style the aesthetic the lingo whatever it may be is coming from people who kind of represent the culture that i'm from cool if that's the case the way to kind of move things forward and to really change culture and really affect change is to get people to look like me in those power positions i understand but we can do both things at the same time we can still have guys killing it on the streetwear side of things and we can also still have people going full front on the fashion side of things they're trying to kind of you know um beat down that door and kind of continue the good work that virgil did once he got hired by louis vuitton but i don't think we need to do one or the either or we can do both at the same time in my opinion but hey what do i know